Okay, it's about 530. And I don't have anybody left in the waiting room. So I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, I will say that this will be available online. The recording of the webinar will be available online afterwards. So please feel free to listen and you know put down your notes. This, all of this information will be available to you um, afterwards if you need it. Um, so welcome and thank you for joining me this evening. My name is Jenna. I work for Tel Aviv University International from here in the US in our New York Office of Academic Affairs. And that's the office through which uh, all US students apply to any of our programs, any of the programs that you see at the bottom of your screen. Um, and I will, I will go into this a little bit more, but first a little bit about me. Again, my name is Jenna. I'm in the New York office. Uh, I am not only the US recruiter, but I'm also an alum of the University of the International Graduate School. Um, I did my master's program in 2011, and then I lived in Israel and worked on campus for several years after that. And um, now I'm here in the US office advising students. So I am happy to be a resource for you as you're considering your academic options in Israel. Um, you should always feel free to keep in touch with the US office. So just at a glance, we're gonna and take a bird's eye view of the university. Um, Tel Aviv University is a big place. It's a big campus. We have about 30,000 students total who are studying um, in one of over 125 schools and departments um, across nine faculties. Their student body uh, represents over 100 countries around the world and is the top choice of Israeli students going into higher education. Um, obviously, the international students who are on campus with us at TAU International are a little bit, the, the group is a little bit smaller. Um, it's, you know, obviously a fraction, but what that means for you as an international student is that you have access to really the best of both worlds. You have access to everything a typical Israeli student at the university would have access to in terms of um, activities and programming, um, and that you also have the added support of the international school, and I will go into what that means a little bit more later. Um, but the, the, all of the programs that are available in English are offered through Tel Aviv University International, which is over 60 programs. We have everything from study abroad programs, including the academic gap program that we'll be discussing this evening, uh, summer programs, internships, research opportunities. We have three full degree programs at the undergraduate level, over 15 master's programs, and over 20 post-grad programs. So there is a lot available. You have the opportunity, if you want it, to matriculate through the university through all levels of your education. Um, but we are here to talk about the gap year because maybe you're rethinking <laughs> what the fall uh, and the next couple of semesters are gonna look like for you um, in light of everything going on in the world. So I'm happy that you're here with us and I really think that this is an exciting option for you. Um, so our academic gap year or semester, you can choose to do one or the other. Um, this program is really, it's a lot like a freshman year abroad. So you're taking a full, academic course load each semester that you're with us. You're a full-time student, um, but you're also obviously uh, privy and have access to um, really exciting opportunities for experiential learning and exploring Israel and Tel Aviv. Um, so there's some stats that I threw up here on the screen for you uh, about the tuition a year versus a semester, some of the application requirements, what I'll say about the application requirements, we are looking for a high school GPA of about 3.0, um, two academic letters of reference, your official high school transcripts and diploma. Um, and all of those things um, can be mailed directly to our office, like I said, here in New York and uploaded to your application, which is otherwise done completely online. Um, now, what I will say to students, 
who ask about these application requirements. First of all, we're not, we don't require a standardized exam score for a gap semester or a year. For the full degree programs, it's a different story, but for this program, um, it's really like a study abroad program. So you're taking academic credit, uh, but you're not earning your full degree. So we're not requiring that standardized score. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So what I tell students when they ask about the GPA and you know how flexible we are maybe on, on admissions requirements is that we're taking a holistic approach. So if maybe you don't meet that 3.0 requirement, I always tell students to talk to the admissions team in my office to put some of their, you know, their academic background in context, to use the essay for, for that and explain, you know, maybe why there's a blip on the radar, et cetera. Um, but we're taking a holistic approach because to spend this length of time abroad studying, especially at um, the age of a gap year student, it really will require a lot of motivation. We are looking for students who are motivated to succeed in this program and um, are coming to us for a reason. We want to make sure that it's a good fit for you and vice versa. So, um, so definitely, if you're passionate about this and you have questions about those application requirements, please be in touch with us and we can, we can talk to you. So for this upcoming academic year, I'm, I put some of the dates there. This is all information that is available online. And like I said, this presentation will be put up online later. So for this fall semester or the, for the year program, which will begin in the fall, it's important to point out that this year, instead of requiring all of our students to do a mandatory ULPAN or language uh, immersion program ahead of the semester, which is our typical program structure. Um, this year we're obviously, you know, things are, have changed a little bit and we are only offering a complete beginner's ULPAN ahead of the fall semester. So that means if you are at a more advanced level, if you have more background in Hebrew than a complete beginner, your language requirement would be fulfilled during the regular semester. You will have a Hebrew class, that's not an immersion necessarily five days a week, but you'll be taking class as one of your electives, um, taking Hebrew as one of your electives. So that is optional for students. Even if you are a complete beginner, if you don't want to come in on August 19th to study Hebrew, you can join us on October 12th for the fall semester and take Hebrew during the, the semester. We're doing the optional, we're making the Ulpan optional this fall. Um, so, as far as the academics of the academic gap program, each semester, like I mentioned, students are taking a full course load of academic credit that for us is four courses. Each of our courses are worth three credits, so that's a total of 12 credits each semester. So if you're staying with us for a whole year, you can pick up 24 academic credits uh, to take with you to your your undergraduate program or wherever you go after that year with us. Um, it's definitely, definitely an attractive option for lots of students if you are maybe trying to avoid the online education this fall being offered by most of the universities in the US at the very high price tag. Um, I'll say that you, know, you don't wanna tread water during that year. This is a really great way to still be doing academic work and picking up those credits so that when you do go back to school here in the U.S. or where, where have you, um, you've, you've got some experience under your belt. Um, and the courses that we offer for our academic gap year students um, are coming from the course offerings available to all of our semester and year abroad students who are university students who come to, to join us for a semester and bring those credits back home. So you're going to be able to take courses with college students in areas like anthropology, arts and culture, uh, Jewish studies, language studies, Middle Eastern studies, social sciences. Really, these courses that we make available to our, to our students are designed, they're based in the humanities, and they're designed so that you can pick up some of these core humanities credits that most um, BA programs, most undergraduate liberal arts programs here in the US are going to require 
all of their students to take by the time they graduate. So um, these courses are going to be really relevant for you moving forward if those are the areas that you're interested in. Um, so what, what about student life? What is it like to be a student on campus at the university? This is something I went through myself as a student. So I'm always happy to answer your questions, but by far the number one resource that we offer our students, our international students, our student life team, the Madrahim, um, who are your point of contact from the moment you arrive on campus until when you check out of your dorms. So the student life team is a group of Israeli students. They are also studying on, you know, in Hebrew on the Israeli academic calendar, etc. But they are on campus as well. They're students. They're living in the dorms. There is somebody who is on campus. Um, they are on call, I'm sorry, 24 seven. So there's somebody on call overnight in the event of an emergency, heaven forbid. Um, and they are they also have somebody who is on shift in the TAU International Office on campus every day that the, the office is open. So you have a resource um, to go to to ask questions about things like using your health insurance, what buses to take, how to how to move around campus and, and navigate your new your new world. Um, the student life team, the Madrachim, are also the ones who are organizing, like I said, student arrival and orientation. They are planning and um, they're planning and chaperoning and everything are um, the cultural and social activities that we do and excursions. Each semester, we take our students on a trip to the north overnight and a trip to the south overnight over a weekend. Um, and these these are opportunities for you to meet other international students who are there maybe for different programs, to spend time with your classmates and the, the students who are also in your program, to get to explore Israel, to have a tour guide showing you some of these exciting things that, um, that are really worth seeing. So it's, it's definitely one of the jewels of the experience, I would say, is the trips and everything that are organized by the student life team. They do stuff throughout the semester, but beyond those tours, those guided trips, like um, last summer we did a, tr a graffiti tour in Yafo. They do pizza parties and beach days and things like this. So um, it's a, it is a, a great part of that experience. Um, when it comes to some logistics for mom and dad, maybe um, I'll talk to you about accommodations and insurance. All of our gap year students live in the undergraduate dorm dormitories known as the Einstein dorms, which are literally across the street from the main gate of campus. So you can roll out of bed and into class. Um, these dorms are equipped with 24 hour security. There is a security guard and an electronic gate that when you arrive, you're issued an electronic fob so that you can, that's connected to your student ID so that you can swipe in and out of the gate. Um, and the dorms are set up like apartment style suites here in the US. So that means you have a fully equipped kitchen and bathroom with two bedrooms that are double occupancy bedrooms. So four students in an apartment. Uh, we don't have a meal plan. There's nothing like that. Um, for any of our international students available. Students are responsible for their own meals, but I can tell you because you have that full, fully equipped kitchen, um, there are grocery stores on campus, near campus, there are restaurants and cafes and all sorts of food available in nearly every building on campus. Um, and there is obviously no shortage of the best food in the world at your fingertips in Tel Aviv. So um, that is important to understand though. And I'll, I'll say that um, this part of our program, the independence is definitely something that benefits our students. Not everybody um, is equipped for that or necessarily is looking for an experience like that, but because Israeli students are so they're, they're much older than a typical American college freshman. They've already been to the army and done their, or done their civil service. So uh, Israeli universities are used to treating students like adults. So you will be 
expected to rise to the occasion and you know you're responsible for your own meals and that's a big part of that but i will say a lot of our students walk away with a sense of autonomy and independence that they didn't have when they joined us on campus and that is priceless so uh, definitely keep that in mind um, we also have like i mentioned before we offer we all of our students are covered by health insurance this is included in your tuition fees and everything it's not no added cost during the orientation when you get to campus you'll be given your student id card and your uh, health insurance card and explained how to use that and again the madrahim the student life team are there to help you answer questions if you need to see a doctor or make an appointment with a, a nurse or a doctor they're there to help you navigate that we do have a doctor's office as well on campus so it's as easy as possible for you to get the care that you need um, okay so that is the accommodations and insurance um, this is my contact information just i'll leave this up here for a minute for you if you want to take a screenshot or a picture or write down my email address that's fine um, and again this will all be available online but i just wanted to make sure you have this if you have follow-up questions for me but if you have questions now i'm going to check the chat function and see if you guys have been leaving questions great okay um, so i'm going to leave this up here while i am answering some questions let's see what will programs be in person this fall okay so right now obviously you know the global health crisis and everything is an evolving situation um we are planning at tau to be on campus in person running courses and programming as usual um that is the plan for right now we of course will follow any guidelines from the Ministry of Health and the, the Israeli government as they as they come to us. Um, it's an evolving situation. Obviously, we can't predict what will happen. But what I can say is, it's no secret if you're um, if you keep up with with Israeli news that you know right now Israel Israelis are back at the beach and they are you know coming their experience of this global health crisis is very different than what many of us here in the US are still experiencing. So I think Israel has proven time and again that they are the best at crisis management and um, that's definitely something to consider. Okay, let's see. Admissions timeline, thank you. Okay, so what is our admissions timeline like? Um, what I will say is we do our admissions on a rolling basis. So as soon as you have opened your application, uploaded all of the relevant documents, and we've received your transcripts and your letters of reference, and your application fee has been paid, then your file will be moved to review. So once that is all complete, it usually takes a few weeks, I would say three to four weeks typically to hear back from us but certainly you should always feel free to keep in touch with our office with me um, with our admissions team and and let us know if there is you know uh, an academic conflict or something that you have um, in any exigent circumstances um, just keep in touch with us and and we'll be able to give you an idea um okay transfer credits to u.s schools so uh, we have partnership how do how do credits transfer is the question so we have partnerships with hundreds of universities around the u.s um, penn state michigan state duke tulane like we have we are we have partnerships formal partnerships with, with many universities around the u.s we have informal agreements with other schools um, what i'll say is that Lots of students join us every year. Most universities have, have seen credits, transcripts from our programs before. Um, I always tell students that, you know, you have to consider the, the subject of a course that you take, um, if it'll be relevant 
back at a school in, in the US. So, you know, for example, don't I, I wouldn't expect to take 24 credits of humanities based courses with us for your academic year, gap year, and then expect all of those credits to transfer into, say, a neuroscience program back in the US. It, it needs to be relevant, obviously, but those decisions are always up to um, to the institution you're trying to transfer the credits into. Um, you can, um, all of our, all of the course information, syllabi, things like that are, are available online for evaluation. It's a, a, pro, a, a common process, um, but it's typically not a problem to bring these credits back to the U.S. Okay. Um, is there a place to quarantine if we need to? If you, okay, so again, what I'll say is if at the time that this, that your program starts, if at that time the Israeli government is still requiring you to quarantine in order to enter the, the country and begin your program with us, um, there will be a place for you to quarantine. It, we've, um, we've learned that the dorms will be, there will be dorms available for students who need to quarantine in advance of their programs. It will not be the same dorm room that you'll be living in for the rest of your program. Um, and obviously there are additional housing fees and other fees like food delivery and things like that so that you're able to quarantine to stay in, in those facilities for two weeks. But if that is a requirement at the time that your program begins, there will be a place on, on campus of, that is available for you to do that. Uh, okay, it looks like that is most of the questions that I'm seeing um, in the chat function. So unless there are any last minute questions from anybody, what I'll say one more time is that, you know, as an alum of TAU International, as somebody who has spent a lot of time on campus and in Tel Aviv, um, I, I love the opportunity of getting to help others find their own experience in Israel. Um, and I certainly understand that a lot of people these days are, um, are reevaluating what the next few months are going to look like, what the next year is going to look like. And I'm excited that you've decided to, to consider this option. I think it's a very exciting program, crisis or no. So um, I, I hope that if you have any other questions as you're considering your options, you'll feel free to get in touch with me. Um, all of the information that I put up here in this presentation tonight is available on our website. You can see that on your screen right now, the, the URL. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. So unless there are any other questions. Nope. Okay, all right. Thank you again for joining me this evening. I hope that you guys have a great night and a lovely weekend. And I hope I'll hear from you soon. Good night.